and yeah, this is the uh, Sunday night webinar. This is February 18th, and there's the number 205, I believe. I'm Gene Clebago, and we're glad you're here. Um, you know, uh, we've got a really strange one tonight <laughs> because I'm not sure exactly where to start, okay? Uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Roger showed a video that he had made, and uh, it, it brought up a thing, you know, that, you know, years ago, we had two very, very popular programs. One was called Photo Story, and one was called Movie Maker, and, and, uh, yeah, they were really easy to use, easy for uh, both you and the kids to create, you know, pretty decent little videos, movies. But uh, Windows is removed, Movie Maker. If you have it on your computer or if you've downloaded it, it's still available there. But... Uh, Windows, you can't go to Windows, uh, to Microsoft and download it anymore. It just isn't there. So, uh, what I'd like to do tonight is talk about something that uh, Microsoft has done that actually might be good for you. My video. Okay. Uh, let me ask you this. Uh, we have been talking for a long time about Google... Uh, photos and the fact that if you have a phone or if you have a pad and you take pictures uh, first of all you don't want to get a whole bunch of pictures on your phone it eats up your memory and secondly uh, if something would happen to the phone or if you change phones your photos are gone that you need to save them somehow somewhere and we have been uh, talking about Google Photos, and it is a very good uh, place to save your photos. If you have a Google account, Gmail or anything, and, or else you can sign up for one in a matter of five or ten minutes, you can get it. And... Anytime you take a picture, it will be immediately uploaded to your Google Photos. Well, it seems that just recently, just recently, Microsoft has uh, started to compete a little bit with uh, Google Photos. Let me show you, first of all, let me see if I can... I'm going to have to jump back and forth, and I hope you will forgive me for this. Uh, on your computer, if you have Windows 10 running, you will have, you should have, if you go to, I'm just going to go to the letter P, you will have a thing called Photos. This was a and I've tried to, I tried to research this. It was started supposedly with Windows 10 very basically. But in October, when Microsoft updated, they came out what they call a fall creator update. And you may or may not have gotten this on your home computer. Uh, I believe they've been put onto the school computers, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it, it's been updated, and it's a really cool little program, and it works several ways. Let me just show you how it is, and then I'm going to show you how you can upload your photos uh, from your phone to it, okay? no matter if you have an Apple phone or whatever. This is Google, it's Google, excuse me, Microsoft Photos, okay? And what it does, it has 
all of the photos, it goes to different places on your computer and even into your OneDrive to see where your photos are. Some of these pictures, some of these photos, pictures, whatever, videos also, you'll see that these are videos, are on my computer. Some of them I have loaded them onto my OneDrive. I do have Google Photos also, and this does not work with Google Photos yet. Let me just show you, to show you, I'll uh, go here to settings, that it automatically went to my pictures, my pictures, these are the places where I had pictures. I have on my, <clears throat> excuse me, on my desktop, a folder full of images that I use. It found those. It found some other ones here, and it found some other ones here. And you can add more, if you wish, to your photos. Now, why would you want to do that? Well, we'll show you that in just a few seconds, okay? Now, it kind of works in conjunction with your a folder called pictures okay now uh, we mentioned before and if I could bring this up again uh, somehow or another that you can put an app on your phone uh, to uh, let me just get this bigger why is this there we go to download the pictures on your phone or on your pad if you have a pad to your computer and it works pretty easy and it's pretty cool and if you've been with us in the last oh I don't know four five six weeks and uh, we've talked about the Microsoft garage uh, let me just see if I have it here real quick. I thought I had it. There it is. Yeah, Microsoft Garage. These are people who, in their spare time, create new things. Okay? We've talked about some of the things such as the um, Dictate and things like that. Not all of these things are for Office. Some of them are actually for the Apple devices and so forth. Okay, but notice over here, this is the latest called Photos Companion. And if you go to your uh, store, whether it's the Apple Store or the uh, Google Store, and look for it, you will find uh, the looks kind of like this, and you can download it. Okay, now to do that, once it's downloaded, you go onto your device and start it and you will see this on a Windows 10 device open the photos app select import from mobile 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 over <laughs> boy I'm not talking well Wi-Fi and then point this at the scanner okay it sounds but it's really simple here's what you do you open your photos you go to import and you select it's not there on my computer it says that I need to select from mobile over Wi-Fi, but you may find that it's not there. If it's not there, don't worry. It only took me a half an hour to figure this out this morning. <laughs> Go over to your settings, click on settings, and down at the bottom, way at the bottom, it says preview. Help Microsoft test the mobile import o over Wi-Fi feature and just turn it on. Okay? And once you've done that, once you've done that, keep my fingers crossed now, it takes a second sometime. And sometimes you have to stop and start the darn thing over again. Okay? It's not okay. So what we're going to do is close that. Then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go to my photos again. And then hopefully this time, there it is. Now it'll say from mobile over Wi-Fi. 
And all I have to do is click on this and I'll get a little QR right there. And what I need to do is aim my camera or my pad. I have the app open at that thing and it will connect and then it will show all the pictures on your camera or your pad or your device and you'll be able to download them to your computer. You don't have to connect it to your computer anymore. You don't have to uh, do anything except add that little app and that could be a very helpful little app. So that's the first thing that you may want to do. Okay, that will help you to get some of your pictures into your uh, computer. Now, I do recommend that even though they're on your computer, that you store them somewhere else. Some people still prefer to put them on CDs, DVDs, or thumb drives. That's fine. But I do recommend that you put them somewhere else. I recommend that actually that you upload them to your uh, OneDrive that you have, and you can store them there. You have a terabyte of space on your OneDrive, okay? And you can store them there, but you should store your pictures twice at least okay now okay what's so good about this <clears throat> excuse me photos that we have here and well a couple of weeks ago Roger showed a video that he had made using this and this is where they have put the new video that was once a movie maker. And it's a fantastically easy device, as I found out this week, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And it's just right there. Create. Create. Okay. Excuse me. I have to move something. Create a video, automatic video. I used custom video. Or you can create an album. Okay. Now, you can create videos there. Oh, I should have shown you something beforehand. I'm so sorry. I've got to go back a step, please, before we go to the videos. <sighs> Over here on the left, you will see collection. These, this is a collection of all the videos that photo, the photo app is, has found on your computer in those various spots and in OneDrive. You can add more if you like, and I'll show you that I'm going to in just a minute. Okay, I don't know where it recent got that from. I'm just going to kill that. It finds these things every now and then on its own. Now, uh, notice it will say there are albums. Well, I don't have any albums yet, but this is kind of cool. People, notice it goes through the pictures and finds pictures of people. Now, this happens to be my granddaughter who's actually visiting me. She's now 17. And she's visiting in Florida. But if I were to click on this, it will now pick out all of these pictures all the way back to 2005 that it found her in. Okay? Up till 2017. I have more. I just haven't put them in. And again, that's my grandson who's also down here. And it goes back to, well, 1222, I don't know what that is, 2006, you see? It goes back, and that's kind of a cool little thing, okay? Anyhow, also in folders, these are folders that it found, OneDrive, the images, public, these are the ones, but I can add folders to this photos to be able to use them in different ways. And I'm going to show you that now with the movie maker, okay? Let me show you a problem that I ran into this week with a, a teacher. Let's see if I can kill this. Okay. Sorry for all this running, all this messing around. All right. This week, uh, a, a certain 
librarian called me up and said, Hey, Dad, oh, it was my daughter, I've got a problem. Uh, in the morning at LaSalle, they want to show you know, the news. And she says, I'm creating PowerPoints. PowerPoints are great ways to pray it and you can see I just I took part of one of her part of one of her new shows here to show you okay and to create a movie out of a PowerPoint is very easy we showed you do how to do that last year uh, last week or the week before and we'll show you again the problem is with this particular type of PowerPoint Notice there's a little bit of text on one slide, a little bit more, a little bit, and a lot here. You want to show certain slides a great deal longer than some of the other slides. So, how do you do that? Well, there is a way in PowerPoint, but it's awfully awkward. There are two ways, actually. There's one called Rehearse Timings, and if you click this, it brings up the slide, and you'll see that it starts here, one, two, three, four. I want it to go five slides. Okay, I want it to go to the next slide. It brings up the next one, and now I have to, yeah, that can get awful long. Okay, so I'm just going to turn that off. I didn't like that, and it didn't work really well. Okay, so we were still wondering how could I make this into a movie in which each of the slides could be shown a different amount of time and the answer is it's very very easy first of all uh, here's something that you may or may not know if you wish you can save every one of those slides on PowerPoint, each one of those slides, let me go back, as a picture or a PDF. And it's very simple. Just go to File, Export. This is where we created the video, remember? And notice here it says slide, second spin on each, slide, on each slide. See, you can't differentiate. Well, you probably could. There's a way of doing it here, and I played with it, but Boy, was that weird and diff it was kind of difficult. So what I did was I went to change file type. Notice over here it says JPEG. I want each one of those to become a picture. Hit save as. I'm going to save it on my desktop. It's probably there already. Yeah. Okay, or it asks me, which slides do I want to import? All of them. And in a few seconds, each slide in your presentation has been saved. Now, that's how you can save all your PowerPoint as, uh, a, a, as a slide. Now, here it is right there. There they are. That's kind of cool. Now, how do I turn this into a video and make it uh, each slide a different time? Well, this is pretty simple. And again, this is where that Microsoft Photos comes in. Well, my photo um, photos are not here in that folder. So what I have to do is add a new folder. Okay? Now, uh, I'm going to add another folder because that's not the one. I'm going to go to my desktop and I'm going to find wherever it is right there. I'm going to select it. And I'm going to say, add that one. Hopefully it did. I don't know if it did. Uh-oh, did it? Let me try that again because I'm not sure it did. That one. Add this folder to pictures. Okay. Hmm. Let me go back here. Now let me go to folders. Oh, look at this. There are the pictures. There they are there. It just added the folder as pictures. <laughs> That's interesting. I thought it was going to add the whole folder. 
and it you and it did sometimes so I'm, I'm a little confused why it didn't do that I'll be honest with you but now I can use these in a video I'm not going to show you the whole thing next week Raj is going to get into it a lot more but I'm going to pick these pictures select all mine why don't I just clicked on that okay and then add and notice I now have a video created from those slides now I'm not going to as I said I'm not going to show you all of the if ands and buts because you can you have themes you have music you have landscape you oh, so much you can do but the simplest thing is this right now if you look down here at the each of the slides you'll see 1.7 this is the time that it's being shown obviously we need to change that so if you right click on that and then just click duration I want that one to show five seconds change here I want that one to show eight seconds change this is much faster than the PowerPoint way duration oh another five seconds okay now here's the one that has a lot of text a lot of reading so maybe I want to show that for 30 seconds see and you'll see that my over here if you look here the video is getting longer and longer and I could go through and I'm not going to right now and once that's done I mean I can add text over top I can add motion I can add 3d effects we'll deal with that next week but that's how uh, we create a movie from those PowerPoint from that PowerPoint that we can change the duration of time for each slide very simple very simple and then when I'm done I just hit you know okay uh, pick a slide you know hit this and it's going to create the video I don't want to do that right now because that's going to take some time okay but that's all there is to it so uh, this is again uh, let me go here this is called Microsoft photos and we do recommend check your computers at home you might want to check your school ones because I'll be honest with you down here in Florida I don't have my school computer down here I didn't want to bring it down because of safety regulations and every, you know, reasons and everything but uh, check and see if it's there if it's not there you can go to the where are we here okay Microsoft store and do a search for Microsoft photos and just download it and install it on your home computer you can try it on your school computer I am not sure it's going to uh, uh, to 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 uh, allow you to do that or not by the way notice up here now it says new video okay so it's been saved automatically you notice it's switching it's showing me the various slides okay all right that's so that's how easy that is this is some thing these are some things that you can do with you know with your uh, uh, photos this is part of a Windows 10 so that's pretty cool I, I like when that part of it now last uh, well, time to change gears I guess there there again if you ever want to see what some of the new stuff that's coming out do go to Microsoft garage just do a Google search for it it'll be take you there see and then you know click on the projects that they're working on and it's it's really cool I'm not sure I'm going to get there okay yeah and again here are some of the things that they're doing I mean it's it's amazing 
what these people are coming out with. Some of them are, as I said before, like face swap. If you click on face swap, <laughs> notice it's for Android and Apple devices. It's not for Microsoft at all. That's kind of cool. And you can go to your pad uh, or your phone and download that too. But anyhow, pretty cool. There, it's it's interesting to see what these people are coming up with, and. Uh, it's not shown here, but there's another thing that's going to be added in, and we're going to talk about that in just a few minutes because, now let's see if I can switch back here. <sighs> Last week, we talked about something called forms. And if you were with us, we were saying that, first of all, if you have Office 365, which all Niagara Falls teachers and so forth do. If you have a, a, a login, you have the uh, Office 365 online and you can install it either on your home computer or your pads and so forth a number of times. Four, I think four, four installs uh, for computers and then you can put it on your phones, your pads as well. Excuse me, I needed a sip here. Now, uh, most of these uh, we've talked about and we're learning a little bit more about, but one of the ones that is really, really useful we talked about last week was called Forms. And there they are. Last week, I believe, oh boy, I can't remember. Is it this one? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to, yes. Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Uh, we said that creating, you can create a quiz or you can create a, like a, a survey, uh, okay, and uh, they're very simple to do. Uh, we showed you la last week how to create questions and put in answers. And if you haven't, you can probably a, do it just by going there and trying it yourself by adding questions and so forth. Okay? Now, uh, oh boy, am, am I going to the wrong one? I apologize. Okay, this is the one I want. Uh, We've done this. We showed you how that you, you can put pictures in them and so forth and so on. It's you know, and then how it can be shared online. And if you're not uh, familiar with that, or if you want to little know a little bit more, we're going to show you how to do that. Well, next week we'll go into that a little bit more with the embedding. We talked about embedding last week putting it on a website. We'll show you real quickly again how to share it with uh, kids today if you like. But one thing that I didn't show you, I've shown you, we, we went through some various different kinds of questions. Number one, uh, the ones where you can click on an answer. Uh, and there are like where you can put in short answers and so forth real easily. But this is a type of question that you can put in and it's, let me just show you, it's got a weird name. It's called a Likert. Likert? Okay. All right. What a Likert is, is you put in kind of like a topic something you want to talk about and then you have several questions and then you have the really like to really bad okay so that you could go in and rate again your office opinions 365 I just threw something in here so you could do that okay but it's a very simple thing to do all you need to do is click on add a question now, you'll notice it says choice, text, rating. I don't know why they didn't put Likert as one of the possibilities. Now, here's the question, and I just typed in, uh, uh, I have no idea. Uh, 
uh, and again. What are your opinions on office? I'm going to add this again because I'm going to show you how I did it. Okay. Okay. I also notice I have the caps lock on. I'm sorry. If I wanted to add a picture here, I could add a picture by clicking here. But I'm not going to right now. Now, my first statement would be something like, uh, uh, do you like uh, word, I think. Okay. And then you can go up and click on the options. Really like it. Okay. Option two. Like it. Okay. We can go over to option three. It's okay. Option four. Man. And option, oh boy, I typed that wrong. And I, option five would be, okay. Now, uh, if you'll notice here, I could add another one. Uh, okay. Okay. I can, and I can add as many of these kind of like in a in a scale or you know descending order or you can have them in an ascending order if you like and you can add different statements okay all right uh, like again all you need to do now OneDrive okay then you can add another one okay Okay, and, and you, you can see now you've created kind of a, a a different kind of question. They call it a Likert, and it's pretty pretty simple. They just added this just recently to uh, Microsoft, and this is kind of why to Microsoft Forms, excuse me. And this is why I think Raj and I keep telling you. What we don't have any control, we and you don't have any control over the updates on our school laptops. And Raj and I keep asking that these things be done. Uh, and we'll show you something that in a minute that another reason why we're going to have to go and ask them to. Uh, turn them on, update them, uh, because uh, there are always new features coming out for these things, for these. So if you have it downloaded at home, be sure that you continually update your uh, Office 365 we showed you how to do this, but in case we have some new people, really quick, all you need to do is if you have it loaded onto your computer at home or whatever, just select, open it up, select a blank document, go over to File, go to Account, and you'll see Office Updates here. And if you click on it, and then Update Now. I'm not going to do that because if I have updates, It'll go through a process of updating them and so forth and so on, okay? But that would be how you update your uh, Office product. And please, please do that because let me just show you what they're going to do, okay? Uh, I happen to, Raj and I happen to subscribe to some things. And this is one that we just, you know, subscribe to. They're blogs from Microsoft. And these are some of the new features that are coming out with forms okay they're going to come out with uh, new question types Likert has been 
already com come out with, they've come out with it but you'll see what they did is if you click go here and click on this and by the way I I have put that onto my uh, flipboard so you can go here if you want and you can see how it works okay you can go to liker just as we did create the thing just as we did okay now the next thing and this is where Roger and I I just talked to him tonight and we're going to maybe have to go and talk to somebody Microsoft Forms will allow you to use professionally created standards aligned assessments that have been created already put them drop them right into forms and I'm going to click on this to see what it says you'll see first of all I can't do it now I'll show you that I can't okay but it says sign into office.com and then ask your IT well, that's what we're going to have to do to get to turn and when you go to office forms.office.com click in a new quiz it says click in the upper right corner and then office education resources that won't be there yet we're going to try to get that turned on for our teachers for you and you'll notice that there'll be hundreds of uh, educational resources and quizzes that you can drag right into uh, your forms and you can filter them by grade and subject resource and you'll see only standards that are relative relevant for our region it says this is pretty cool so it has a lot of possibilities I don't know if you can see this but it's you know it's talking about you typed in somebody talk, typed in math eighth grade common core standards and they've got you know volumes function as a rule scientific notation square and cube roots and they can get uh, assessments already okay select get and the assessment will be created and you can go in and edit it but right now we don't have that feature because it hasn't been turned on yet okay uh, case see when you go to forms what they're asking you to do is to go up here and click here and it doesn't show that as yet okay uh, hopefully soon we're going to try to do that another thing uh, we're not going to uh, you know we're you're going to be able to collaborate and share forms with teachers if you wish uh, and we won't talk about that right now but here's one that's coming up it's not been added yet but they put it as under development okay now it's going to allow you to uh, notice this is PowerPoint and over on the right there is a there will be a thing called forms and if you click on it it will show you your forms that you've created and you can insert them here you can actually from what it looks like you'll be able to do is to create forms right within PowerPoint and as it says here it's currently being developed and will be available to desktop users of PowerPoint in a few months that means that it won't be on the online version it'll be one of those updates that we just said that you should keep doing okay again this is these are some of the things that Microsoft is doing to try try to uh, assist you in uh, being you know uh, to using the uh, office 365 in the most useful efficient way that you can you need it for and again if you go here you can click on any one of these it'll show you that same basically that same thing uh, that I showed you okay but again it's lots of good stuff coming and we hope that you'll use it if you have any questions about forms please let us know it's a terrific terrific thing oh I know what I forgot to do I mentioned that in case you weren't here last week
we have a question. Notice I have this question here, or this sample survey that I would like to share with some people or have people to people do. Now, there are uh, several ways to do it, and uh, next week we'll show you the best way. But right now, if you click on share, uh, just to do it, we did it last week, but maybe you, you know, here is the link. You can click here. Okay, and this will give you like that link, you know, this address up here that you can then either send to somebody or whatever. Now, this might be a little difficult if you're at school, okay, because it's, notice mine is using my home uh, email address. That would work right now for me at, uh, you know, not at home. But if I were in school, it probably wouldn't work because our email is not working there. But you could write this address on the board, okay? Or, or and uh, it would be very easy. Or you could, uh, you know, put it on their laptops. However you want. There is another way. Uh, you could embed it. And uh, we're going to show you that next week. Also, if you have kids with their own devices, <laughs> okay, you can put in a little QR code. We love those things. And put it on your website. And when somebody clicks on it, it'll take them right to this sample survey. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Really, really like Microsoft Forms. And again... There are so many tools out here that we can use. Uh, we are working on, you know, teaching, you know, bringing OneDrive to you, SharePoint. Teams is fairly new, and it will allow you to create teams that to work together, uh, where you can uh, create your classes in there. Class notebook works. You know, they all interrelate. Again, forms is really, really useful. Okay. Wow. Been pretty heavy duty. I don't know if I probably closed. Oh, there it is. I have added, you know, as you know, if you go to our uh, Roger or my uh, web page, and you can do that by going to any of the school teacher resource pages uh, where they have the teacher websites. Because uh, uh, Roger and I and Marie and Shirley are all on all the schools. Log on it. You'll see that I have a uh, Sunday night webinars for January and February. Uh, linked in there and, and, and every week I add some things Roger does as well uh, and I'd just like to you know take a few minutes now to show you some things that are well maybe not uh, tied into some of the tools that are uh, associated with our school but you might like this. Got any te uh, teachers in grades one to five? I, you know, some of these tools and resources I just found today, and I'm going to have to be honest with you. Some of them look pretty good. I have not had a chance to go through them really, really well. If notice this, it says instant access to books for kids. Okay, this is. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see if I can get it. If I can get to the... Yeah, all right. Epic. This is... This is... Looks like it's incredible. It's supposedly free. Uh, and here's ways you can use... Uh, okay. And it says it has up to 25,000 ebooks and quizzes 
for grades K to 5. And, you know, these are, some of these are pretty well-known books, you know, from what I can see, okay? Uh, ages 9 to 12. All right. And you can uh, view them. You can sign up. You have to sign up, and then you can get started, okay? But you might want to take a look at this. This might be a good place for you to find some other materials that your students can read. Uh, I know a lot of you use RAS Kids in the lower grades, but these, you know, this might be a great site to check out. I found this late this morning, this afternoon, and I haven't had a chance to go through it serious, you know, to a great extent, and I really do want to go through it a little bit more before, before we uh, show it, okay? But it, if anybody takes a, a moment and goes through it, maybe they want to send me an email and let me know what they think of it, okay? That would be great. Hey, anybody watching the Olympics? Here is from Larry Falazzo. Larry Falazzo, this man, I don't know how he does everything he does. He has best lists for everything. But here's a list for learning about the Winter Olympics. And, I mean, he's got lists about Olympics, he's got uh, how Olympic, you know, I mean, videos that you can watch. If you are into, you know, tying the Olympic games into maybe your learning, uh, here's the best sites to teach and learn about the Olympics. A lot of stuff. Larry is, I mean, he's got just so, so, so very, very much, okay? Uh, okay, but Larry, you know, and again, the internet. Uh, this is kind of cool. I ran into this again late this afternoon. Do you make posters or do you think that you would like to make posters for your classroom, but you just, you know, <sighs> this is kind of cool and it's kind of easy. Uh, make a free poster. This is called designcap.com, by the way. The step one is to form a template. Okay. Let's just go down here. By the way, I noticed that they have a couple of festivals spelled wrong, but I won't go through that. Let's just, you know, grab one here. Uh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. These are all of them. If you want to sort them out by topic, let's just pick t education. And, yeah, we can... Pick the, you know, pick out these various things. Let's pull this one up, and there it is. Now, this is, you say, well, I, that's not what I want. Okay, well, the next thing is you click on these places. You can pick a uh, tag, and now you can go in and change the text to whatever you want. Okay. You have the background, and you can change the poster to, you know, maybe you want to do a writing center. Okay. If you want to make this bigger, okay, you can do that. You can also, yeah, I mean, you can look here. You can see these things over here if you want to change the color of the text and so forth and so on. Is, well, okay, we can maybe let's see if we can get it red. Ah, why am I not doing this? Okay, there's okay, that's not, okay. Pretty simple. And you can go in and change the text. If you want, you can add your own photo. Uh, I have not looked at the clip art yet. Oh, they have some of their own clip arts that you can add. Okay. Things like that. You can design your own posters. Cool little place that, you know what? It might be uh, a place where you might have students design posters uh, for their learning, you know, to show off some whatever they've learned or something like that. Would be a great place for them to do that. And you know, they can be, you know, a little bit creative and so forth. But it's a real easy place. It's called Design Cap. Okay, uh, 
excuse me, I'm going to get rid of a few of these before my computer crashes. Okay, uh, okay, uh, okay. I don't know where I am here. Okay, now, uh, where was I and who am I, I guess? Oh, uh, we've been talking about, oh, where is this? I gotta move this thing. Uh, you know, I kind of been talking about some lower level, you know, uh, grades one to five reading and so forth. But there's a there's an interesting one here. This is uh, six websites for high school teachers. If you're a high school teacher, here's some cool sites that you may want to take a look at. You may have heard of them before. Actually, these sites are not only great for uh, teachers uh, for the students they're actually great for the teachers you may want to go and take a look there we've talked about many of them we mentioned the Google Arts and uh, Culture if you are in, you know in the art area you may want to go there that is terrific CK 12 they it provides on it says online uh, oh my god resources galore textbooks videos exercises flashcards everything uh, all kinds of ideas and so forth. Great place, and it's all free. It's all free. The Khan Academy is mostly for you know the high school students. They have a, a great, mostly it says that they cover such as things as math, science, economics, history, and more. Uh, there, they've got some good topics, good videos, good uh, exercises, things like that. The Smithsonian, of course, would be a great thing you know, that you can go through. And again, the Library of Congress for a primary source documents that you might want to choose. But again, take a look at that article. You know, If you're a high school teacher, you might want to take a look at some of those. OK, uh, let me just cancel this. There were some, oh, uh, where was this? Oh, math teachers. Here's a, this probably, this, boy, that didn't light, that didn't light, uh, okay. Raj and I have talked many, 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 many times about uh, Ted Ed and the, oh, I don't even know how many lessons that have been created by other teachers here. Uh, right now, uh, this is a topic called math in real life. Uh, again, showing students why it's important <laughs> to learn math. You know how to use it in real life. I, I, I started to watch this. How high can you count on your fingers? That was cool. And it says it's much higher than ten. It's kind of an interesting thing. And again, a brief history. And, and you can go through and pick out things. And again, in case you're not familiar with Ted Ed, Ted Ed is, well, let me just show you if I can. I'm just going to show you without going into it. Ted Ed is a process where you watch a video. Okay, there it is. Then you think, if you think, because there are multiple choice questions based on the video, say, okay. Then you dig deeper by uh, looking at uh, some of the topics that they've highlighted and the uh, text that they've put in. And then at the end, there's a, a discussion that you could have the students deal with the this one has gotten a couple of responses again Ted Ed is a terrific place um, somebody uh, you, you generally asks uh, what levels are there and and I don't know exactly I'll be honest with you but probably uh, they're not for the first second graders you know they're a little bit higher that's my my best uh, my best uh, assessment of that. Let me see if I can get back to. Uh, I think I screwed up here. Okay, I'll do this. Okay, you're gonna have to. I'm sorry if you don't mind. Oh boy, come on here. My computer is now. Uh, 
taking a, a break. Anyhow, there are some other things here that you may want to uh, put in a couple of places where you can get free images if you need it. Uh, there's a couple of things just for your knowledge. How computers work. If you're interested in how computers work, take a look at this site. It has several videos on how computers work. Good technology. And you've probably heard of the term the Internet of Things. If you're not familiar with that, there is a very good infographic. Okay, the Internet of Things. It explains a little bit here. And then it's got a kind of a decent graphic, infographic, if you want, with a lot of information dealing with what do they mean, the the Internet of Things. It's, it means that it's linking more than people. It's linking uh, devices, so forth and so on, such as, you know, the things in your home. I know, see, I'm in Florida right now, as you know, but every morning, the first thing I do is check my thermostat up north to see that my heat is running properly. I have one of those uh, thermostats that is connected to the Internet. So it's part of the Internet of Things. And uh, it's amazing. By 2020, there will be 40 to 80 billion connected objects. That means there will be 10 connected objects for every man, woman, and child on the planet. These include, I mean, Phones, uh, t you know, TVs, uh, refrigerators, anything, okay? And trying to help things run better, I guess. I, I you know, it's it's kind of scary. Cell phones, coffee makers, washing machines, headphones, lamp, anything you can think of. Kind of cool. So anyhow, that's the Internet of Things. You might want to take a look at that. You know, just to you know, get some other things. Lastly, oh boy. Well, it's going to be hard to get at right now, so I'm going to I'm going to have to save that for for next week. And also, since we uh, I've just looked down at the clock and found that I've been talking too darn much for too darn long, and I want to thank you for listening. Uh, again, take a look and see photos on your computer. If you have Windows 10, do you have it? If not, download it. It's really useful. Uh, if you like, you can uh, go to Photos, Compa Photos Companion. Make sure it's from Microsoft Corporation. And you can connect via your internet, your home internet, your pad, your phone, to your computer so you can download your pictures. Makes it a lot easier. And with that, we're running out of time, and I want to thank you very, very much for joining me. Uh, Roger will be back with us next week, uh, and uh, we'll be talking more about videos and, and other, hopefully some other good things. And please let us know if you have any questions, interests, topics that you'd like discussed, because would be glad to, you know, to include them. And with that, one hour from now, you will be getting a survey, a thank you email, actually. It's a thank you email. And please open it up because inside of it is a survey link. If you click on the link, it'll take you to a very short survey, which we do ask you to fill out. And uh, I will then send in the report of the attendance and the credit to the Teacher Resource Center. If you ever have any questions about that, again, please let me know as well. And with that, I'll say good night. Have a nice day tomorrow. Have a nice week, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you uh, again uh, very much. Good night, all.